Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on my channel. Today we are dividing onto a topic that many of you might have already thought about or will soon. Switching from Windows to Linux. Is it the effort worth it? And what exactly do I need to consider? We are going to answer exactly these questions today. Let's start right at the beginning. What is Linux anyway? Many have heard the term, but few know what's behind it. Essentially, Linux is an operating system, just like Windows or macOS, but with one crucial difference, it is open source and free. Imagine if Windows code was viewable by everyone, modifiable and usable for free. Sounds crazy, right? That's exactly the case with Linux. The core, the so-called Linux kernel, is the foundation on which countless variants called distributions are built. Here are the main characteristics that define Linux. At first we have freedom. You can download, distribute and even customize Linux to your own liking, all for free. No forced updates, no pro versions you have to pay extra for. This is unique in the world of operating systems. It's also open source. So unlike most other conventional operating systems, you can view every line of GNU Linux code and understand how the system works. A huge community of developers worldwide checks the code daily. This creates an enormous level of trust and transparency. Also the data privacy. In times when our data is constantly being collected and analyzed, data privacy is a huge topic. With Linux, your data belongs entirely to you. Your private documents stay where they belong, on your computer, and the best part, yeah, of course, because it's open source, you can verify it. Also the security. Thanks to its huge active community, which includes countless security experts, Linux has a sophisticated security concept, especially for servers. It has proven itself over decades and is still completely up to date. No wonder Linux is by far the leader in the web server sector and not just there. Linux is in most mobile phones. Yeah, Android is based on the Linux kernel as well. Printers, cars and all top supercomputers and even on the Mars rover. Now that we know what Linux is, let's go to the exciting questions. Why should you even use it? Besides the points I already mentioned, like freedom, open source, data privacy and security, there are other convincing reasons. One of them is resource conservation. Do you have an older computer that's just crawling under Windows 10 or 11? Linux can work wonders here. Many Linux systems have very low hardware requirements. This means you can breathe new life into your old laptop or PC. This not only conserves our planet's resources, but also your wallet. Buying new hardware can be postponed significantly. So switching from Windows 10 to Linux is an excellent idea here, which many people are doing right now because of the coming end of Windows 10. Also, no recall, no pointless installations. With Windows, you often feel the system dictates you or clutters your device with unnecessary software. With Linux, there is no recall or data, no pointless installation of Candy Crush or other bloatware you don't want to have on your system. Also, no weird end user license agreements, online account requirements, subscription or traps. Who isn't familiar with those endless end user license agreements that you just click away or the compulsion to create an online account just to use your operating system and then the subscription traps or trial versions that cost money after a short time. None of that exists with Linux. You have the full control and you stay in full control and are free from any such of these restrictions. Linux is no longer the complicated system of the past only for absolute nerds. Many modern distributions are incredibly user-friendly and even remind you of Windows in their operation. This brings us up to the next point. What about software? 
<laughs> one of the biggest myths about Linux is that there's no decent software or that your favorite programs won't run. That's simply not true anymore. For 95% of computer users, I would say Linux is a very well suited choice. Yes, there will likely be some adjustments in the software area, especially if you rely on specific proprietary programs, like for example, the Adobe suite. But for almost everything, there are great major alternatives or even the original programs directly available for Linux. So in Office software, instead of MS Office, for example, there's a free software called LibreOffice. You may heard of it already. It's a great software. I use it all the day. Or if you don't want to use LibreOffice, you can, for example, access MS Office Online. Or if you rely on Microsoft formats and want to do it also offline, then SoftMaker Office would be also a great option. They also have a free variant. If it comes to graphic and image editing, for Photoshop fans, there are powerful alternatives like GIMP, Inkscape or Krita, especially for digital painting, for example, Krita, Inkscape for vector graphics. But if you are a professional which heavily relies on this Adobe software and can't switch because uh, you are working with others to Together, then maybe Linux won't be the right system for you. Maybe if you want to change, you have to consider a Mac because yeah, the media industry has a very high focal point on Mac. But if you are not 100% relying on the Adobe software, then you will find great alternatives I just mentioned. Also, if it comes to email instead of Outlook, you could use the popular Thunderbird email client. It's a great alternative in my case. It got big updates in the last two years, but also, of course, you are still able to access Outlook Online, for example, or your mail provider in the web browser, of course. But also many familiar programs run natively on Linux. Programs like VLC, Media Player, Firefox, Chrome, Edge, Spotify, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Zoom, Teams, Skype, Discord, Dropbox, TeamViewer, Blender, Audacity, Visual Studio Code, the JetBrain IDEs and Eclipse and many, many more are directly available for Linux. That's just the tip of the iceberg. And also if it comes to gaming, yes, Gaming is also possible on Linux. Many big games like Elden Ring, GTA 5, The Witcher or Overwatch now run great on Linux. Cloud gaming services also work perfectly. If there isn't AAA game that does not run perfectly, there are often compatibility layers like Wine or Proton, specifically for Steam games, which makes Windows programs runnable in an isolated environment on Linux. But if you still have some software which you have to use and which doesn't run on Linux, you could install Linux alongside Windows or if your program doesn't need big 3D performance, then you could also choose your know, Windows in a box. So you install a virtual machine with a virtual computer and which runs Windows on your Linux system, which also has a very high compatibility amongst all other Windows programs. So this could be also an option. I put you the link into the video description because yeah, I already made a video about this. It's very easy to do that. Another point that often causes concern is drivers. With Windows, you're used to often having to install drivers for your graphic cards or other hardware after installation. For Linux, it's usually much simpler. Most hardware parts that are older than one year are fully supported by Linux. This means you install your Linux and usually everything works immediately. Sound, Wi-Fi, graphic cards, this is because many drivers are integrated directly into the Linux kernel. This is a big difference to the Windows kernel. All the drivers have been developed as free alternatives by the community. Of course, there are exceptions. Certain very new or proprietary hardware like special sound cards, navigation systems, or fingerprint sensors, but fingerprint sensors are getting better right now in Linux, can sometimes pose challenges. But for most users and common hardware, driver support on Linux is excellent, so you don't need to bother about this. Some minutes ago, I mentioned the term distribution, but what exactly is that? Think like a little different flavors of ice cream, all based on the same basic ingredient the Linux kernel. A distribution is a complete operating system package that includes the Linux kernel, a user interface, so-called also desktop environment, and a collection of software. And if you put these three together, 
you have your distribution. There are hundreds of Linux distributions, each with its own philosophy, focus and target audience. From minimalist systems for service to user-friendly desktop for beginners, everything is available. For getting started, we clearly recommend Linux Mint Cinnamon. Why Linux Mint Cinnamon? It's very user-friendly. Linux Mint, especially the Cinnamon variant, is designed to be incredibly beginner-friendly. The operation strongly resembles Windows 10, which makes the transition much easier for many. You'll find the start menu on the left bottom corner, the taskbar and the file management in familiar places. Linux Mint is also known for its stability and reliability. It often runs like clockwork for years without major issues, less hassle with viruses and updates, and more time for the really important things. Also, there's a huge and helpful community around Linux Mint, even internationally. If you ever get stuck, you'll quickly find help in forums like, for example, linuxmintusers.com and many, many more. And after the installation, you are fully equipped. You have everything important on board right away, a browser, an office suite, a media player, PDF viewer, and much more. You can just get started immediately. Of course, there are great other distributions for beginners, such as Ubuntu, if you prefer a slightly more modern desktop environment. But for the first step, Linux Mint Cinnamon is our clear recommendation because it's a very complete operating system, which has so many tools and is so well thought and and yeah, I would say it's the best alternative to Windows if you want to start using Linux. If you're now curious and want to take the leap, then for our upcoming series, we'll go through the transition step by step and you'll only need a few things. You need a USB stick, at least eight gigabytes onto which we will put the Linux system and also a little bit of time, especially at the beginning. It might take a while to get familiar with things, but that's completely normal. And of course, enthusiasm and motivation. I would say, let's start the adventure together. Let's be honest, getting started with Linux can take some time, especially if you are battling through the installation and setup on your own. It could very well be that the first steps with Linux cost you more time than a simple upgrade to Windows 11, but, and that's a big but, this initial investment pays off massively in the long runs. Remember, you don't have a recall system anymore. You don't have pointless installations of Candy Crush. The system remains lean and fast. You keep full control over your system. You have no online account requirements. You decide what to share and you don't have any subscription traps or trial versions anymore. Free software stays always free. With Linux Mint, you get a stable, system that runs like clockwork, you'll have less trouble with updates and more time for the truly important things. In the long run, you'll better understand the fundamentals of your computer and have full control over your data all the time. You'll learn to solve problems independently and won't have to rely on expensive help anymore. So to summarize, the initial time investment in Linux is worth the threefold. You gain knowledge, control and save time and nerves in the long run. That's it for the first part of our journey into the world of Linux. I hope I was able to give you a good overview and perhaps clear up some misconceptions. In the next video, I'll show you how to prepare the USB stick and restart the installation. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to Linux Art so you don't miss the next episode and write your questions and experiences with Linux into the comments. I'll be very happy to see some of them and if you need commercial Linux support as a business or as a private individual, just have a look into the link into the video description because we are also offering some Linux support if you are interested. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.